Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nerdgasm Podcast, the podcast where we talk about things that are nerdy and things that are naughty. My name is Merlin Sensei, and I always keep my hands at 10 and 2. With me, of course, is the 12 sided guy who is sure to keep an assured clear distance between vehicles. With me is the man who is always uh, heel to toe when it comes to the gas pedal and the brakes, Mr. Switch Riggs. And the woman that throws all that shit out the window and still decides to give us Roadhead, the Mupacabra. And that makes us a mostly functional and safe driver known as Nerdgasm Inc. You forgot my road rage, but other than that, you're good. <laughs> road hey. raging boner? R- oh, road well, raging boner. One. Fantastic. All right. All right. We're not going to top that tonight. Thank you, everyone, for listening yeah, to today's we episode. Just, we can stop right there. <laughs> and no worries. We'll talk about blowjobs on Wednesday, everybody. Let's go. Woo! Yeah, we will. We'll be wobbly, tobby, rhymey. You know, How appropriate. I'm usually, like, don't get me wrong. Bit of a blow job, I'm okay with, you know what I mean? But for me, that's always foreplay, you know what I mean? Like, that always kind of gets the, the blood flowing literally as well as figuratively. Mm-hmm. I, I have never had a blow job actually get me off. <sighs> Some people don't. I mean, I, it seems like I have more um, people with penises in my life. I guess men, they all identify as men. I can say men. I have more men in my life that that doesn't work for than I do that does, to be perfectly honest. But Dress Blacks gave me a gold star, so. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I'll never turn one down, but I'll always kind of let somebody know. It's like this, like, we're, we are going to fuck after this because this isn't going to get me off. Like, this is you lubing it up and I'm about to destroy your pussy. (laughs) Anyway, well, maybe we'll come back to that later, because right now, it is part time for part part time for the nerdy part of the Nerdgasm podcast part. Nerd part part. So many parts. Many parts make a whole. So, no, that's, that's the gasm part. That's later. Can I tell you something? I, I did not share this because Dress Blacks just told me about this right before we started the podcast. Um, and it's hilarious how bad, like, just, I, I don't know whose idea this was. You know, like, sometimes when you, you think of a thing, and you're like, this is a great idea. And everybody else looking at that idea is like, no, please yeah. don't. And so... He, he told me, so Grubhub offered free lunches in New York City. That's when the chaos began. So they were running a free lunch promotion on Tuesday. Um, it was between, I believe, uh, uh, sorry, between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. They were advertising a $15 credit for anyone in New York. So, oh, no. Yeah. Immediately, right? <laughs> he told me this, and I'm like, how did that work for them? And he was like, oh, it was so bad. Like, it was... So, New, New York surged. City or New York State? New York City. In all five New York City boroughs. So, <gasps> here's... here's We're gonna... There's a couple things wrong with this. Demand surged at one point. There were 6,000 orders a minute coming through the app. Like, whole slew of canceled orders, undelivered food. They did not tell any area restaurants that this was occurring. Nobody knew. They just did it. Like, it... <sighs> did they think they had enough people to deliver? That's insane. Or did people yeah. like the food? According? Basically. They... According- <laughs> Sorry, I need my paddle. (laughs) According to the information that I have in front of me, the approximate metro area population of New York City is 18,867,000. It's very population dense. I actually don't know where my paddle is. I'm going to have to come up with a different. I got my controller today. 
son of a bitch. Question is, do I want a red one or do I want a purple one? That, that's the question. Oh. I don't know. Man, we use bunnies purple today. How did I lose a whole ass paddle? There it is. Some some part of me thinks somebody at uh, at Grubhub or whatever it is just just did this purely for the, the giggles. They were like, I'm going to just fuck with a I'm, ton of people. I'm fucking everybody. over. It's literally like people were freaking out on social media. Like you had to know this was going to go badly. You know, it, it just. It was probably management just like, hmm, sales are down. We need to get our name out there. Let's just go ahead and offer a $15 credit. You know, it's like. Um, to like a specific borough, maybe, or like you know, maybe for an hour. No, 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 eleven to two for all five boroughs. Of it's like, and and again, they did not tell any restaurants that this was happening. Like it's a Tuesday. I don't know if any of you have worked food service, but historically Tuesdays are the low point of the week. That's the day you don't schedule people. That's what they're they're like. I wish we would have known. Like it was great to have their like the one woman was like we were getting literally six orders at a time and we couldn't stop it. There was no way to stop it. We had to like it was just a giant clusterfuck. All right. Close close the restaurant. We're doing delivers for the rest of the day. <laughs> and that's what it said. Grubhub said it had sent advance notices to restaurants in preparation for the promotion and increased driver incentives to help support demand, but added that, quote, no one could anticipate the level of demand, and unfortunately, that caused strain on some restaurants. Oh, please. You you, you $15? You can get a free lunch out of that much. Well, yeah, I was going to say, it's like, so, so you couldn't anticipate that an area like New York... Which also has a high homeless population, so if any of them were able to get a hold of a phone for all of five minutes, you know what I mean? Right. You know, it's like, yes, I'm I'm surprised, like, th there weren't more, you know? So, yeah, it, it's w way to go, Grubhub. You suck ass. Great idea, but, like, Very really? poor execution. Uh, well, you know, any news is good news, even if it's bad news for a corporation most of the time, so... They got their name out there. Some of you got a big payday, too, for delivering, I bet. I bet they did. At least this wasn't a huge sexual harassment suit or something. I mean, it's not like we do anything about those anyway in this country. I mean... Sorry. I'm a little angry company. in this country. Bad. Bad. Yeah. Bad company. Very bad company. And so, yeah, I just wanted to... Because demonetize. Whatever. Why? <laughs> Fucking demonetize me. Suck my dick. I was about to say demonetize these nuts. Yeah, really. So yeah, that was my thing that I did not share beforehand. I apologize. I did not follow protocol. But literally dress backs dress blacks told me that right before, and I was just like, that's such a bad fuck. Like anybody that can count to ten. No, I'll give you that. Anybody that count to the $15 that they offered could tell you why that is such a bad idea. Especially considering some of these restaurants in New York, food is actually not that badly priced. Like, if you go to some of the smaller mom and pop shops, you can still get pizza slices for a couple of dollars. Like, I could see some of these restaurants like that just being completely overwhelmed. Yeah. Definitely. Um... Let me see. Oh, la, 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 la. I have other topics, but if somebody else wants to go first, I will shut up and allow you to. Honestly, some things catch my eye and then I'll forget about them. Sometimes I'll share them. But honestly, I I feel like I'm extremely... Uh, what's the word? Stupid. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, I will go next. I'm just ill-informed and stupid. So we talked a little bit about how Elon Musk was talking about buying Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, surprise, surprise, he doesn't want to do it now, right? Um, 
basically they're saying now there's less than a 50% chance that this is actually going to happen now. Um, the, the article that I read from Markets Insider said Elon Musk is using a dog ate the homework excuse to potentially back out of buying Twitter. And there's now less than 50% chance the deal gets done. So basically, he was complaining. Um, he, he had planned to put up a big chunk of his Tesla stake to finance the Twitter buy. Um, but then last week, he started raising all these concerns about how many bots there are on the social media platform. And then saying, which fucking everybody knows that there's bots on every social media platform. It's just what yeah. it is. That's not a secret. It's not like, what? All these people on Twitter aren't real? What? Like it's ridiculously oh. easy to set up a script and just have them go wild. Right. So basically said, until his concern was sorted out, the deal would be on hold. And so his sudden concern about this, literally like Twitter shares dropped 10% on Friday when he announced this. So anything, the shares go up or down. Right. But they're essentially thinking because the Tesla stock was starting to fall, he had this, oh, I'll just say that I have a problem with the bots kind of thing. You know what I mean? That's what they said. Our view is while Musk is committed to the deal, the massive pressure on Tesla stock since the deal, a changing stock market slash risk environment the last month and a number of other financing, financing factors, excuse me, has caused Musk to get cold feet. And so he's kind of using the bot thing as a scapegoat, which fucking duh. When you have that much money, you get to do whatever you want anyway. So I. In fact, you can go ahead and grab their ass, kiss them. They want it. They secretly want it. I don't know. In other horribly sexist and stupid things that Donald Trump said. Oh. Yeah. Well, so the the interesting thing about this is even if he does, so he was supposed to buy Twitter for forty four billion. Even if he doesn't buy it they still get basically like a billion dollar breakup fee. So like he still, he still has to pay them at Elon least. Elon Musk, something. you want to date me and then choose not to date me so we can have, so I can a have billion a billion dollars? dollar breakup fee. Right? Like I, who knew that that's he all is? it took? So I, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I, I wish I was better at Twitter. I'm just not good at it. I have one, obviously. I use it for this podcast. I run the Nerdgasm podcast. I don't run it very well because I'm just not that interesting of a person. I don't have the time. Like, I feel like Twitter is very much like on the pulse of what's actually going on. And I just don't give enough of a fuck to comment on every single thing that's happening in this dog shit country. Does that demonetize us? Can I say dog shit country? No. America being a dog shit country is is <laughs> we just label is, is it perfectly acceptable. Sorry as long as you don't it. say anything bad against God and Jesus. First, we just label it not for children, and two, we're not having anything monetized currently. This so, is true. <laughs> People have to want to give us money for us to lose money first. Well, who knew? We'll get there. I mean, we've got some dates for Elon Musk. Yeah, I mean. I could name a baby a random string of letters. Let's do this. Oh, goodness. I got another I mean, topic, I'm, but... Oh. I'm, just... I'm excited for... Uh... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just... No, uh... no, 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 go, 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 go. Take the ball. Oh, right. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the new League of Extraordinary Gentlemen coming out to Hulu. Yeah, I saw that you posted something about that, that it's going to be a series. Now, the only thing that's going to make me sad is I'm assuming none of the original cast from the movie are going to be returning. Well, I, I believe it's, it's meant dead. to be animated for 10 episodes, so. Oh, we'll animated. See. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, either way, the, the, the Victorian one. So we've, we actually got quite a few things coming out down the line. I'm going to admit something. I know that League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is not the movie with the superhero with the bowling ball, but for some reason, I always think it's the movie with the superhero with the bowling no, ball. that's Mystery Men. That's what Mystery it's Man. called. I knew it's not the same thing, but every time my brain goes, oh, that one. I've actually never seen either movie. Um, They're both good in their own rights for different reasons. 
they're not top tier A grade material cinema, but you know, all right. That's what we strive for at Nerd In the 1800s. Looks like it's going to be great. Um, there's a few things coming down the line, actually. We've got a, a Rick and Morty anime that got 10 episodes. That's uh, A Rick and Morty sp- anime? Specifically an anime, yes. It did got you post 10 that? episodes. And it's, and it's uh, directed by the same guy that did... Oh, I cannot remember the name of that. The one where they kill God. Like, literally. Neon Genesis Evangelion? No, Rick and Morty, the episode where they kill God. Oh, oh, um, never mind. Um, let, me, let me look up his name, because mm-hmm. I'm sure the Rick and Morty fans will be like, oh yeah, I know that person. I didn't even see that they got a, an anime. Where was this at? 12, you're supposed to be posting links. He did! He posted it! No, uh, there's a link about fucking... It's in general! Thing. It's in general! Oh, that's oh, yeah, why so I that can't find it. could read what I'm talking about. That's, yes. Um, Sado. That's, that's the fellow. Um, directors oh, yeah, Rick and Morty anime episodes. series. Yeah, Rick and Morty anime series. Oh, Floof will be excited to, to hear that. Interesting. Huh. I'm looking forward to it. I'm so far behind on Rick and Morty. I'm extremely we far up. behind because I haven't watched any of it. Oh! I, I've it's watched bits for everybody. and pieces. I can understand it's, that. I I understand it, but it's not interesting. There, honestly, I didn't get into it until it got a little bit, like, oddly philosophical for a cartoon. Like, I'm pretty sure the the episode that finally, like, cinched it for me was the one where he's like, everybody dies, let's go watch TV. Like, after he just snaps. And I was like, okay, yeah, everybody dies, let's go watch TV. I can get behind this. Just like Adventure Time, I understand the the background of it and, and the, the whole philosophical part of it, but again, it doesn't interest me. Yeah, I've never seen that one either. Is but that the one I... with the guy that looks like a stick of butter? Yes, I guess so. Okay. Yeah, it's a post apocalyptic oh, uh, dog. Shake yeah, the dog and bend the human. Yep. The fun. Yeah, I love. Never I love Adventure Time. It's Adventure Time. The only thing that I know from Adventure Time is that the one. Making pancakes, making bacon pancakes. Well, yeah, that making bacon pancakes. I know that one, but is that the one with the the song about it's there in the garden upside down? Marceline. Yes, that's Adventure Time, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, Marceline the Vampire Queen. Yeah. Oh, that's what she is. I don't pay attention to this show clearly. That big, big titty goth girlfriend. All right. Uh, Lumpy the Space Princess. Queen. Oh, wow. I mean, that so too. So much vampire going on right now. There is a lot right. of vampire going Before on. Before we talk about vampires, can I talk about one more thing that's going to be a little bit of a drag, but I really want to address? Is it going to be blood suckingly bad of a drag? <sighs> Sorry. You might feel bad that one. you made that joke here in, in a second. Um, okay. So there was an article that came out about a week or so ago um, about how they found the cure for SIDS. SIDS is sudden infant death syndrome. Um, and everybody like pooped their pants and got so excited about it. Well, um, if I can interject for half a second. Uh-huh. Uh, I did see that I thought that they had started to narrow down what caused SIDS. I didn't know that there was. So that's kind of what I want to talk about is basically everybody started posting these articles. Like they found the cause. like. Um, the closest thing to a miracle in a long time and a lot of these really hyperbolic statements that just, um, I wish, right? I really, really do wish. I'm not making a joke about SIDS. This is a very serious topic. Like, I got shit. I co-slept with my oldest and there were so many people that told me I was going to kill her. Um, You'd be surprised how many people will say that to a new mom. It's staggering, to be perfectly honest. And I do know, like, not, I, I know people that have, lost babies that way it sucks it's terrifying and so to hear something like oh my god we have a cure um is really encouraging right you are correct what they had essentially done is they had narrowed down 
and give me it's a big word so i apologize i apologize um basically they were measuring activity levels of a specific po- protein but- butyl cholinesterase i'm probably saying that wrong um but they had been measuring this um their sample size was about 600 babies um they collected it shortly after birth 26 of these died from sids and then another 30 went on to die from a different condition within their first two years of life. So out of a sample size of 600, we're talking 26 specifically that died from SIDS, which is not a huge sample. Yeah, but it's not a good number. Right. But on average, those who died from SIDS had somewhat less um, butyl cholinesterase activity in their blood than the healthy newborns did. Essentially what they were saying when I first read the article, because again, I was super excited about it too, is just this idea that it's something that helps regulate. Basically like if, if Merlin, if you fell asleep and you started to suffocate, you would wake up, your body would wake you up. Oh, it's like baby sleep apnea. Kind of. Um, Hmm. But I'm I'm using suffocation specifically in this case. But like, if something was wrong, you would you would tend to wake up. Um, su- suffocation specifically, babies don't do that, um, and especially the very small ones can't move their head on their own, so they don't even startle. They don't cry. Nobody knows. Um, and so, basically, what the author had said though was just that this marker could potentially be used as a biomarker to identify and prevent future SIDS death. So, like, we're on step one, and people were acting like we were on step, you know, this is it, we found it. Like, you know, close the books, write it down. Um, So, I I just, basically, this this whole article became, like, a kind of a PR nightmare, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, when they went back to actually speak to the people that had published the study, even they said, like, Measuring the protein will not work as a universal screening test for precisely the reasons you highlighted. Like the the numbers just aren't significant enough, you know. Um, Right, but it is it is a starting point, which is better than nothing. The study identifies um, a measurable biochemical marker, not the cause of the condition. And so it's kind of an interesting topic because we were talking about social media, specifically with Twitter and what have you. These articles made the rounds like wildfire and people inferred from it what they wanted. And so now all of this is out there that, hey, we have this cure. We don't. We just don't. And it it falls into a much larger category of like not to um, make light of this or take anything away from this, but the larger one of the larger problems that we have especially in this country is people not checking their facts people not checking their sources and people taking stuff at their word and again the words aren't wrong but like an un, un, i don't want to say uneducated but a less educated person reading this article inferred from it something very different than somebody who was an actual expert in the field would have inferred from this article right um, they started reading and saw uh, the protein, butyl, uh, blah, 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 uh, butyl, which go yeah. ahead and put that on the screen right now. Yeah, uh, big long word. <laughs> you know, uh, appears to be a potential marker in stopping. Oh, that's the cure! Oh my god! You know, and yeah. didn't even bother reading the sentence. Which, like, I'm not going to fault anybody for getting excited about a potential cure in anything, right? Especially anyone that's been affected by such a thing, but. At the same time, to then spread that word mm-hmm. to only then have hopes be dashed effectively, you know what I mean? Right. Well, so um, to explain a few moments of that, people only read the headlines, and the media has to have a buzzword of some sort. So you mm-hmm. you at least look at it. If they don't right. have it, they don't get the, the view that it gets the small click, even if the person only reads two sentences. That is true. That was largely, I started, um, I went to college for journalism originally. And while it was obviously kind of a different animal in 2006, um, 
we've moved more towards, you know, print journalism is not really a thing anymore, which is what I wanted to do. Now it's all online. And Switch is absolutely right. We're so focused on hitting those buzzwords, getting those clicks that we're not necessarily looking at the message that we're putting out there. That was why I left the major, because to me, there were some ethical concerns with what they were asking from us. Not to be on a high horse or anything, but. Right. I, I can't remember if it was in a movie, a TV show or whatever, but it was like, hey, report on this horrible tragedy that happened. Well, yeah, but what about this thing that happened where X person was a hero and they saved such and such and such this? It's like, no, nobody wants to hear the good news. Right. Yeah. Violent cells. So. All right, somebody else pick a topic because I've talked way too much. Just you, oh. you stopped the topic last time. <laughs> and no, I don't feel bad for my comment, but it is a horrible thing. Um, vampires. What? Lots of vampires. Yes. Many um, vampire. So besides the video games that are coming out, and I've been one I've been playing a lot. Netflix actually dropped a uh, six-part uh, vampire anime uh, called Vampire in the in a gar- in the garden. I hmm. I blitzed through that thing. It was so good. I it had a lot, a lot of action. Of... Or... Um, yeah, yeah. There's there's action. A lot of action. Like the first first thing is uh, vampires attacking a human city. Um, sorry, live action. Oh, live or... action? No, no, anime. Anime. Sorry, I missed that part. Yeah. Um, I thought that was amazing. Uh, I wish it was longer, but it's understandable to how long it is. It kind of puts the whole story, you know, nice and neat instead of waiting, you know, 50 episodes to explain that this person loves this person. <laughs> I mean, my question is, did they bookend it well? Do you actually get resolution yeah. or is it just going to piss me off? You do get resolution. Uh, I, I, You could literally take the elements of uh, vampires out of it and make it two factions of, you know, people fighting each other. And like Romeo a, and Juliet. Yeah. And the um Except for Juliet bites. Yeah. Uh also the um I'm love between uh, two people of the same sex too. You could do oh. you know trying to find the the you know, Eden essentially. Somewhere mm. safe to be. Mm-hmm. That that's a big part of it. And that's all explained in the first episode. But Okay. Um but yeah, it's I was like, this is really good. But yeah, you could just change up the, the you know, the the dressing and it would be a really good story in a lot of different ways. That almost leads to the question, like, if you can just change up, you know, oh, instead of vampires, you know, it's a same-sex couple. Instead of a same-sex couple, it's warring families instead of, you know, whatever and whatever. It's like, does that make it a better show or not as much you know what i mean personally i could have watched it it didn't matter what what uh depiction the characters combination would have been it for for how they how they did it really Mm. um i watched another show another anime i can't remember the name of it right now but they did the entire show where the main character was was a was a was a guy and then there was uh, a bunch of harem-y, like girls around, but it was a story about them to, on, on an adventure to go go find his father. But the final okay. episode was a gender re- reversal of the main character, and I was like, I think that would have been better personally in that mm-hmm. that one situation because you know he wasn't overly pervy or anything like that. But I think if it was all all female casting except for like two people, I think it would have been even better personally and how the interactions went because they show you kind of clips of how it would have been if he if he was a female instead mm. so are you guys ready for my Wait. long list of games well before yeah. we hop into the releasing games i'm going to sure. go ahead and talk very quickly forgive me if i actually steal one off of your list but um we'll for those of you that know um moo and i especially play the uh uh the the video game dead by daylight recently uh as in 
uh, this past week. They just uh, had their uh, eighth anniversary, I believe. Sixth. Sixth? Sixth yeah. anniversary of the game being out. Um, and one interesting thing that they announced as a side project that they're going to be working on is a Dead by Daylight dating sim spinoff called Hooked God. on You. That's funny. I'm here for this. So I need this immediately. Just from what it's looking like, um, <gasps> I can date Daddy. You could date Daddy potentially. Oh my AKA God! AKA Pyramid Head. No, um, that's Daddy. Potentially. And uh, I don't know if they only are going to receive um, the ability to play it with original characters. Then it's, I still get mommy. You do Huntress still get mommy. the Huntress. There you go. So, yeah, it's... Uh, mommy, it's interesting. Me. Sorry. Mommy, uh, sorry. Mommy, yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm hoping uh, it comes out... Uh, some sometime this year, uh, hopefully around the time Romancelvania releases, and then it'll just be all kinds of uh, dating game craziness. I'll just take a week off of work and just be like, I'm sorry, there's so many dating sims, I can't come to work today. That's right. <laughs> M- missed opportunity for Dead by Date Night. Ooh. I still, I think I like Hooked on You better. Yeah, I Hooked think. on You is pretty good. I don't know, it's pretty good. Yeah, Hooked on You makes sense because of how they're always hooking you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, no, that did not take up one of my slots. But we got games for everybody this week coming out. Uh, we're starting off on the 24th. We got one, two, three, four games that I, I have here. First off, some realistic MX versus ATV um, legends. Uh, basically, uh, motorcycles and ATVs uh, duking it out in uh, uh, dirt tracks. If you like to like racing, then we have dirt tracks. Sorry. <laughs> then we have Crossfire uh, Legion, which is going to be a real-time strategy game coming out. It looks actually really um, good, kind of like Starcrafty. If anyone knows that? Crossfire, you know? that's what I was. Up in the... Crossfire, yep. that's what I was singing in my head too. Yep. I'll probably look at this one. Um, because I, I always like real time strategy games like that. And then yes, this can be cool. And then on uh also on the twenty fourth, a game called Soda Citrus is coming out. Uh this is a um a uh side scrolling platformer shoot shoot 'em up contra super meat boy kind of feel game. Um Contra, where... wow, that's an old one. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's still considered a genre. And then still on the 24th, we have Floppy Nights. And the, that's like a floppy disk in, the, in Nights. It is um, oh, okay. card card game slash turn-based strategy where you're uh, leveling up and using different cards to beat, beat up monsters on a grid kind of fight. Very cartoonish uh, characters. I like it. Then for the 26th, we have another racing game, uh, Red Out 2. Very fast-paced, futuristic racing uh, with pods. Basically, Pod Racer. That's not a Star Wars franchise. No, that's Pod Racing. <laughs> and then we have Space Games, where we're uh, playing out there. Basically, going around in space, uh, traveling around and uh, exploring. Uh, this one I didn't look up very well, very much. Um, exploring different planets, and it looks like some turn-based combat for when you're on the planets. Okay. Then, we finally got your roguelike, which roguelike. is Hell Slave. I was looking, I was like, what is this? They were only showing me uh, art. But again, hack and slash, uh, you die a lot, you come back to life, you try to make so it through pretty. again. Okay. And for everybody that loves to shoot people and see the bullet go through their body, we have yeah. Sniper Elite 5 coming yeah. out as well. Yeah. And, and now my last two, we have also a farming sim for it's you, so an adventure um, called Miss or My Time uh, Sam Rock. Sand Rock. Very yeah. western 
style look, uh, but um, farming simulator, no doubt. And finally, the one that I first looked at, which is uh, K-O, K-O, spelled K-A-O, the kangaroo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming out on the 27th. It's For very... some reason... Huh? I feel like that's a revival of an old property. Like, it sounds super familiar for some reason. It does. But you're playing as a kangaroo that has punching uh, um, boxing uh, gloves on, and it's very My reminiscent. My Uh-huh. Very reminiscent of, like, Banjo-Kazooie with the uh, adventure platforming. And that is your games for this week. Uh, to add on to that, of course, we're going to have Merlin uh, bitch and moan about Pokemon Unite here, just real quick. Uh, so you may have heard me mention it on an earlier podcast, uh, but the Unite Club membership for Pokemon Unite has officially launched. Um, it officially launched uh, Tuesday-ish, uh, uh, and it is $9.99 a month. Uh, what that $9.99 gives you is a exclusive first-time membership outfit uh, based off of the Pokemon Hoopa. Um, it also gives How's you... a Hoopa? Uh, that's the one with, with, with the hoops, and it looks like a genie, kind of. Okay. That's Not to stupid. be confused with Landorus and, and those guys, but the, like... The keychain? Little tiny pink ish kind of guy whatever <clears throat> uh you get 40 aos gems a day which comes out to be 1200 which supposedly is a 20 dollar value but honestly they charge way too much for their in-game currency so i'll just go ahead and say hey eh, you kind of get your money's worth really because i'll just go ahead and say like you know ten dollars should go ahead and get you a thousand aos gems in my opinion you know what I mean? That's just me, though. Whatever. Um, so you kind of get your money's worth. You get an exclusive uh, uh, Pokemon Hollowware each month. This month's is for Greedent, the little squirrel-type Pokemon. But all it is is he's got, like, a, 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 a hat with, yeah. like, the poof balls that come down on each side. And it looks like a citrus berry. It's stupid. Yes. Made me think today I saw a very, very, very fat groundhog. He was bigger than Noodle even. And I looked at him and I said, oh, look at you chunky boy. And then he ran into the bushes. But he was adorable. Interesting. Uh, you also get uh, a couple of uh, trial Unite licenses every week, which is just to try out Pokemon. Uh, you don't actually get a Pokemon. Uh, also, some trial Hollowware tickets that you can go ahead and use again it's just to try out um an exclusive uh special frame and chat bubble uh for your stuff and then 10 percent off of new fashion items which honestly doesn't matter because it's stupid and overpriced anyway so do you get your money's worth Eh, technically, in my opinion, what I would highly suggest doing for people is if you are a member of the GameStop Power Up Rewards program, uh, each month uh, you go ahead and get a five dollar gift certificate. Go ahead. Oh, I gotta use mine this month. Thanks for reminding me. Go ahead and use that five dollar gift certificate on Nintendo eShop points. Load that into your system, and then honestly, you're you're really just paying five dollars a month for this, which is definitely more feasible. Uh, I don't think they should have launched this. It's stupid. It's just an additional, you know, money grab when they've already got the battle pass that you have to purchase Aos gems. Uh, in order to get, and yes, this gives you Aos Gems, and yes, it will give you enough to go ahead and get the Battle Pass, but it's just, it, it's too much. It's too much. I don't like it. But well, that's just my personal opinion. Yes. Is well. that your, is that your thing? That, that's my, well, I mean, that's, that's my thing. I'm going to need week, you yes. to be more aggressive about it, because I just thought you were holding that, a big that marker. Is un, that is un-Canadian, young lady. Okay, try uh, harder. Oof. 
Um, on the subject of over, overpriced digital material, though, um, today is the day that D and D Beyond switches hands to Wizards of the Coast officially. And can I just say I would like to get into the ten dollars for digital dice market? Like, I'm sorry, somebody is making a killing on digital dice. You you buy digital dice on D and D Beyond, and these are like ten bucks. Some of them to buy yeah, digital yeah. dice. Because you can, it has... you can play it all on there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. first yeah. of all, Wizards of the Coast didn't own D&D Beyond? No, Hasbro yeah. did, didn't they? No. Uh, Hasbro now owns it via Wizards of the Coast. The chance for this happening today. Oh, okay, so, um... so to explain a little bit, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, the actual D&D books and system is owned by Wizards of the Coast, but they did not own yes. the website. D and D Beyond. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, which was a, a third party service provider who, as I said, make a killing in digital dice. This I think I even paid ten dollars for oh, I found okay. I had to get some of my stuff out of my friend's basement. And I found all my click clack rocks. I just there's just it just all I the paid, I need. Like, 12 for for a, a chess uh, set but um i've paid 50 for the metal like real like metal yeah uh and then uh dimension 20 and uh critical role have a new uh, i think it's called adventures in alexandria i'm sorry i'm going to mispronounce this cuz i don't know uh, Alex, uh, Alexandria Unlimited. There's a team up between Dimension Twenty and uh, Critical Role, which are two of the big ones. So there you go. I'm sorry. I love Dimension Twenty. I've never seen Critical Role. Huh. The the pricing actually has gone down for the subscription. I feel for the D and D Beyond because a hero is three dollars a month now, and a master's uh um setup is six dollars. I remember it being oh. like ten for a master. Mm. So I mean, in Canadian, cool. maybe. I'm still missing a set of dice. Canadia. I wouldn't know if I'm missing a set of dice. <gasps> I have one set that's pink and black. It's my very first set of dice, and Merlin gave them to me as a gift forever and ever and ever ago. And they're missing, and it bothers me immensely. Oh, no. He gave a gift, but he have we take gifts. I'm so confused. That's correct. Talked? I do not First accept D&D gifts. characters on the show before. Probably have. Man, I can't even remember my first D and D character. Oh, my first character, I'm pretty sure, was probably a mage, and it was so squishy. I think I had three hit points. Yep, that's second edition for you. It wasn't second edition. That's first edition for you. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you meant what characters we play now. I was like, I play a bard. Is anyone surprised? Huh. I have to be the DM half of the, more than half the time, so I don't really have characters. I'm all the characters. I'm not there in a D and D game right now, but I am in Vampire the Masquerade. Oh, I want to join. No worries. I know you're not taking applicants. Oh, um, we, we gotta you gotta cram geeky weeky in real fast. Marlon. I got this. I was Take about to say ones. we're gonna go ahead and, and hit it, and we're gonna hit it hard. Sunday, May it, twenty second. Oh, and then Moo's already gonna go ahead and interrupt me as I try and get going. Sunday, May 22nd, your sneaky peeky at the Geeky Weeky was National Solitaire Day. It's also International Day for Biological Diversity, World Paloma Day, National Maritime Day, National Vanilla Pudding Day, Harvey Milk Day, Buy a Musical Instrument Day, and the birthday of Emma Chamberlain and Morgan Stewart. Monday, May 23rd, National Lucky Penny Day, National Taffy Day, Victoria Day up in Canada, World Turtle Day, National Safe Sun Week, and the birthday of Jason Nash and Jackson Duggar. And the birth, it's Duggar, but the birthday of Little Squish. Squish. I always get Squish will be six years old. My Facebook memories from this week are a ton of pictures of me very, very, very pregnant. 
Tuesday, May 24th, National Caterers Appreciation Day, National Wyoming Day, National Scavenger Hunt Day, National Escargot Day, Aviation Maintenance Technician Day, National Brothers Day, National Asparagus Day, and the birthday of Bob Dylan and Queen Victoria. It's nudes! Oh, there's her butt. Yeah, show me your butt. Wednesday, May 25th, National Senior Health and Fitness Day, Towel Day, National Wine Day, National Tap Dance Day, National Sing Out Day, National Missing Children's Day, May Revolution Day, National Brown Bagot Day, as in take your lunch to work in a brown bag, and the birthday of Mike Myers and Roman Reigns. Thursday, May 26th, Ascension Day, National Blueberry Cheesecake Day, National Paper Airplane Day, National Sorry Day, as in I'm sorry, uh, World Lindy Hop Day, and the birthday of Scott Disick and Lenny Kravitz. Friday, May 27th is National Hairstylist Mental Health Awareness Day, National Sunscreen Day, National Road Trip Day, National Heat Awareness Day, National Don't Fry Day, as in Don't Fry in the Sun, and uh, National Grape Popsicle Day, not to mention National Cellophane Tape Day, plus the birthdays of Royalty Brown and Ryan Henry. Uh, Saturday, May 28th, is National Brisket Day, National Hamburger Day, the birthday of Seth Rollins, and the birthday of Cameron Boyce. Your sneaky peeky at next week's Geeky Weeky that starts with Sunday, May 29th, it's National Paperclip Day. Go ahead, bust out a red one if you have it, and see if you can trade it for a house. Cameron Boyce actually passed away. That's, yeah, so did uh, Queen Victoria. Touche. So did Bob Dylan? Mm, I probably, I should know that. I'm pretty sure, yeah. You you showed the cat, and now I can't find the article. I was literally <laughs> just reading an article about a 33-pound cat. Oh, goodness. Is he so big? He's, he's so big. His name's Bronson. That's one fat pussy. <laughs> His name is Bronson, and, like, his his owners, like, they design furniture that mounts to the wall. I'm sending you a picture in Discord oh. of this cat. This cat is gigantic. But, like, these people specifically make, like, wall-mounted furniture for cats. Obviously, this cat is too big to use it. But, like, he's huge. Oh, my God. He's so big. He's so big. He's huge. He's like yeah. he's like a living squish mallow. Yeah. Yeah, he is. It looks fantastic. I bet he's like they literally have to carry him on a special pillow because if they try to pick him up because he carries all his weight in his chest, they squish him. And they oh. physically like it hurts their arms to hold him, so they have like a little carry pillow for him. Hmm. He's huge. Well, it did say in the article that they're going to help the cat on its uh, health loss journey, so good for them. They're aiming for a pound a month. He's down 1.6 pounds so far. I'm very invested in this cat's journey. <laughs> so, um, Merlin, you seem, seemed like you had something you were going to share for the gasm section or something you wanted to no, bring up? I was just, just making running a lot of sexual jokes, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What oh, I do man. Well, I throw things at my cat. She deserves it. She did. She got a D6. I wonder what she rolled. I'll find out later. Uh, she knocked a switch on the floor yesterday. Oh. Her, in case you're wondering. You you can see my anger and my calm. It's just like, calm down. <laughs> this coming Wednesday, you will. This coming Wednesday, you will see that. I'm just transfixed by the cat. I, I'm that person. As soon as the cat's in the room, I'm like, everybody else can go. Pet. No, well, she's leaving. I'm now. trying to. Bye bye. I, I'm trying to think of something to share for the gasm section. I wasn't thinking about it actively because Merlin was running his mouth. Was that a circus peanut? Maybe. You have circus peanut. I love circus peanuts so much. Yeah, if you ever came to visit, maybe I'd go ahead and share with you. Listen. Oh. I'm going to punch you right in the face. So um, this past episode, well, okay. So 
I guess a little peek behind the scenes, right? Um, typically, we record Kink Quest a week in advance. Dress Blacks edits that one. And he had been away for work, so we had gotten a little bit behind. So for those of you that were wondering where Kink Quest was last week, um, oh, they're fresh, too. Look at that. That's a beautiful circus peanut. Sorry for anybody that's wondering where King Quest was last week. Uh, Las Vegas, that's where King Quest was. So um, we are getting back on track. Um, we just did an episode, um, Wibbly Wobbly Timely whiny, Why Me. So yesterday for me right now, like what, four days ago from when you're listening to this, when this is dropping. So um, one of our listeners asked us to talk about anal sex. So we did. Um, we talked a lot about butt stuff, like a lot. Um, and so we did that. Um, we talked a little bit about um, the next one that'll be coming out. So um, four days from three days, three days Wednesday. from when this comes out Wednesday, guys, my brain is shot trying to figure out how time travel works. Um, Wednesday, we'll be talking about um, blowjobs. Talk a bunch about oral sex. Again, I like a lot about oral sex. So it's funny that you brought up the roadhead thing because it, 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 we, we're, we're going to be talking about blowjobs. Um, we thought it would be fun to do kind of like a, because um, we're not professionals. We've never claimed to be professionals. Um, what we are essentially are people interested in sex who have taken the time to educate ourselves um, where we can. Um, right. And so we are planning on kind of doing like a kink quest um, tips and tricks. We did sort of like a dear younger me as far as like the mushy gushy stuff, but this is more like a, Hey, these are our tips to not be awful. Like maybe these things might help you. So um, I guess what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm issuing a call out. So if you have um, some type of burning question, not a burning sensation that you need to go to a doctor for, I am not a doctor. Um, see your physician if it burns. But if you have any burning questions that you feel like we could answer, or you think, gosh, you know, I've, I've always wanted to be better at this, or I'm super curious about this one topic. Um, please, please, please get a hold of us. Godzilla. Um, please get a hold of us. It's non-denominational. Um, (laughs) go ahead and get a hold of us. Um, you can tweet us. If you don't feel comfortable asking those kinds of questions, I promise I can be discreet. You can email me directly. It's mupacabra at yahoo.com, M-O-O-P-A-C-A-B-R-A. So, um, for instance, I know I, for instance, Sneaky Peaky, um, when we talked about the blowjobs episode um, and oral sex in general, I know I specifically was worried about, I worry about taste. Um, Not me tasting other people. I worry that I taste bad. Like, this is a genuine thing that I worry about. And um, I think a lot of other people with vaginas do too, to be perfectly honest. Um, I've heard people with penises also say they worry about how they might taste. I've um, specifically asked Moo how I taste. Like a penis. I mean, yeah. it's not, you know. Like I, flesh and maybe a little bit salty if it's sweaty. Well, and we talked about that too, honestly. Uh, sweat <laughs> happens. It's a thing. Um, but so... We strive to be open and honest with you. We strive to be open and honest about the things that we have struggled with. We strive to be open and honest about the things that we enjoy in hopes that we can not necessarily, um, I don't want to say entice you or badger you into trying something new, but just maybe if it's something you were kind of on the fence about, um, just know that you're not alone in being curious about it. So, um, oh, motherfucker. Moo, moo, chugga, 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 chugga. I, I derailed. Um, that sentence was going somewhere. Switch. What you got for me? Okay. Well, it's actually a little off topic of that, but I, ha- I actually have a something that should have been in the nerdy section that I have a burning question for, for the group. Um, what do you all think of the new uh, Chibi Moo character that we've created? I need I need need some information. Adorable. I hope everybody loves the new logo as much as I do. Oh my god, I'm gonna plaster it on. She's definitely mascot. She's definitely mascot. I was gonna say it's it's not necessarily a logo, but it's a logo for now till I get a better logo. It's true. 
I slapped that shit on everything. I'm so excited that with what Bunny did. I love it so much. I think she did a great job incorporating everybody. I love the little 3D glasses. I love the rope harness. I love the little 12-sided die. Excuse me, goodness gracious. And I love me. Like, how do you not love a girl in a pink cow print sweatshirt? It's fucking adorable. Like, yeah, it's very cute. I have. We do need to. Go ahead. I was gonna say we do need to come up with a name for her. That's Chibi Moo. Chibi Moo. What? what? Yeah. It's close to Chibi. We'll figure it's out a name. Chibi Moo. I'm Chibi Moo. It's all okay. <laughs> but what? What do you think of her twelve? I I like it. I have a little trouble with the gradients, but that's the, the gradient is anything. just a background, not the character. That's that's whatever. Yeah. We're not putting no, that like on the, the t-shirt. Character. I love the character. Uh, we need, Are we, we getting need that like, made into a t-shirt? I need cool. that in a t-shirt that's like cut down to here because I hate I hate this is even this this shirt is a four X and I don't like the way it touches my neck. It's really problematic. You could definitely get it turned into a t-shirt. That's not a problem. We also need like I, I, you might know what they're called. The uh, those like, uh, lewd anime statue things that people get. Anime girls. Oh, Merlin has stuff. in his room. Yeah. Show one of your ladies. <clears throat> you do. There's a whole shelf of them. I didn't say it was problematic, but you got a whole shelf of naked ladies. Can they're you show us? Naked. They're, they're, they're mostly naked. naked. They're they're. Mm. Show, grab one of the ladies and show us, Merlin. Grab one of the well, ladies and show us. Well, you he, you try to tell me. Well, he does that. Um, I'm going to have not her naked. switch out the uh, white uh, part of the hoodie and make it black for King Quest. So there's there's oh. two different types of hoodies. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're Merlin definitely is. making the Moo Train and it is derailing in the picture. The, 100%. That's right. Well, no, See, no, you, specific, you specifically picked one with clothes on. You're full of shit. Your Most is of not... them are scantily clad. Most of them are tits out. Because I was are like, out. Look at them. No, but they're, they're like in I'm sorry. Look at them. <laughs> Those tits are out. Her midriff was definitely exposed. Full on. Uh, I... Um, Hashtag not sponsored, but I found these um, like lace bralettes at Aldi and I wore one to work the other day. Wore it under like a long sleeve sweater that came up all the way. You couldn't see it, but I was in the back of a golf cart riding across campus and the jiggle physics were fantastic. Like everything just bounced. It looked so good though. Like <laughs> normally I don't like the way any of this looks, but I was like, that looks, that's, that's a solid jiggle. Like it's like when you smack the surface of something and it, and then it settles down. I was pretty proud of that. Oh god, that one video you sent me, my first response was like, how long, how long were you giggling at yourself watching your tits bounce in the Tit Mouse likes jiggle physics. Like in video games and stuff, she thinks it's really interesting. She showed me some of the stuff, especially like with Black Desert Online. It's really responsive and it's funny that somebody took the time to do that. And so when you spend any length of time in a 26-foot box truck, there's a lot of bouncing. And so I will, I have sent clips to Titmouse because jiggle physics. I also, that, that the day I sent that video, I sent that after we had been in the truck for, I can't tell you how long. And my boss made a comment about, oh, the greenery is really nice here. And I'm like, yeah, the trees are beautiful. And then I realized he meant the fact that I was wearing a green shirt and it was just my tits the entire <laughs> fucking way to Chicago. <laughs> here's, here's one for you for jiggle physics. Uh, in Dead or Alive, I think it's yes. three or four, depending on what age you are, is how how much jiggle will happen with the boobies in that game. Set it hey. to 99. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere in 99. <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys a quick question since we've been talking about boobies and, and, and blowjobs yes. came up. Um, again, I'm shaped very differently than I used to be, right? Um. I used to be able to just like wrap my boobs around somebody's dick and it wasn't a problem and I could still get my mouth on it because I was big. Um, I can't do that anymore. And I'm wondering if that's something that you guys, um, I don't want to say have a preference for, but like have done or enjoy or you're kind of ambivalent about. 100%. Love it. 
<laughs> um, two gold stars. Two gold. Two, stars. two gold stars. <laughs> right here. One, I two gold stars. I I haven't really partaken in in the full mm -hmm. event, so to speak. Um, you know, there's been some playing around and stuff like that, and I wouldn't mind, you know, having a full on, you know, tit blow job or whatever, you know what I mean? But I think the issue is um the fact that I am I am not I'm not extremely long. You don't you have know, to so be. there's kind of don't have to be. Yeah. There there's there's ways and positions that get it done really My well. high school boyfriend was like I mean, you you boys twelve didn't, but you boys know what it looked like in high school. Um, he was like, "Can I please? Can we? Can we just can, tip fuck, please?" And I was just like, "Yeah, but I'm pretty sure gonna, you're gonna have to like straddle my chest," which is what he did, and it actually worked fairly well. Like he kind of did. Like we talked on the blowjob podcast about like sitting versus hovering when somebody says "sit on my face." He kind of hovered a little bit because he was a bigger guy as well. Um. And he didn't crush me, and that worked pretty well. And he was not, I mean, he was average, maybe a little, sorry, a little less than average. Right around that range. He was probably average, because what's average? Five and a half? He was average. Um, so I think five and a half is considered average. He's I think average. that's the national average. Whatever. Um, but that worked pretty well, and I could still kind of tuck my chin and, and get it. The part of it in my mouth, at least. So, twelve. I've I've done you, it. I okay. can take it or leave it. Really? I was going to say you, you are probably yeah. the best equipped from everything that I've heard to get a his dick is I, huge. I've done it. I can take. I've done your it. Your dick is it huge. It. It's I, you can roll your eyes at me, but objectively, it's very large. Like I. Thank you. There's yeah, not I a. Mean, I, I didn't even say it as a compliment. Like factually, your dick is big. Like, what do you want me to say? I. It is. I, I don't know. There's a there's see? a there's a joke in there. I don't know. Nope. There's no joke there. Factually, your dick is large. Like you hear it, heard it here, folks. His dick is big. Like I don't know what you want me to say. Merlin's you... is thick. It just is. Like it Twelve is what it is. His name. No, not 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 that long. Um, but like I said, I could I could take it or leave it. It's it it's been a fun experience when I've had it happen, but it's not something I'll actively seek necessarily. But you're an ass man, so that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, but like okay, so is it the same thing with butt cheeks? Do people do that? Yeah, people oh, yeah. do that. Yeah. Called hot, hot dog dogging. Yep. That's the thing. Yes. That's the best name we could come up with it for that. It looks like a hot dog Think in a about bun. It. It's, it's in between a sausage buns. In, in between like, buns. I get yeah. it, but like I just I guess I would have thought I mean not that tit fucking is especially eloquent, but like I prefer the Japanese uh name for it, which is Paizuti. Mm. Paizuti thy booty. No, that's no a tit fuck is Paizuti. Oh my god. But yes, the one thing that makes me sad, Moo, is that you're not as reactive with your, your boobies, or I would be, like, requesting that. I'm not anymore. There's yeah. a lot of stuff that I can't feel. Well, so so here's the difference. It's not that I'm not reactive. It's a different type of reactive. So basically, because of the way everything was cut off and then sewn back on, my nerves either don't feel it, or it's, like, absolute immediate overdrive to a level that it almost hurts. Um... So, like, I can feel suction more so than, like, actual, like, if you touch gently, I can't feel it. Um, but it's one of those things where even when I was reactive, it's not like it particularly did anything for me. Oh, um, no, it was more the fact that my partner enjoyed it. Yeah, right. it's, it's more of hearing your reaction, even if it's not a lot, that add, adds to it. Yeah. Because, like, you know, like... I'm gonna call you out, Bunny. You're gonna turn Fifty Shades of Red. Um, you know when when she does, she will do a titty job for me. Um, mm -hmm. I want her to also be like, you know, messing with her nipples or something, so that she's getting some enjoyment as well, alongside of it. And I know, you know, it's not just just me, and that makes it even more yeah. 
more better for me than her Fair. just sitting there, me going back and forth. Well, right, but I would say unless you unless you suck at sex, like you're gonna be reactive regardless. Like you don't just lay there and go, "Yep." No, I've met a starfish. Look at him. I have met Fly a starfish. Magic. It's a thing. I I know that it's a thing. Uh, I don't know that I've ever been that. No, probably not. You definitely weren't. Recently. Um, I'm not. You want to fuck with a starfish? You give them the SpongeBob. You get on the bed I next have, to them. I have. Photosynthesis. Oh, Photosynthesis. Chappy starfish. Sam. Starfish. Yeah, but. Unfortunately, the person enjoys it. Enjoyed it. They enjoy but, being a starfish? No, they enjoyed the enjoyed the actual like action and feeling and everything, but they had been mm -hmm. so trained to be quiet in their home oh. that you there's gotcha. nothing. It's just like I'm not getting anything. Yeah. The yeah. Aud the mm -hmm. audio is also needs to be part of this situation. Oh, absolutely. I've said it before I know on the podcast. I am a big fan of vocality when it comes to we don't need to be screaming so the next door neighbors three no, you know, but... need to be hearing, but you know, something. <laughs> something that you know it's happening. And everyone I'm gonna faces. plead the fifth at this point. I was wondering um, what that face was. Well, Moo was thinking about the time when her and I were having sex, and she thinks that. Either my sister definitely heard. She definitely heard. There's my no dad way she definitely hear. heard, or mom definitely heard. I'm not sure which. See, I um, know. your parents were hopefully asleep, but your dad always seemed to like me. Um, but he was nice it's to me to before like. that. You were a redhead. Aww. He was a redhead. He I know likes redheads. Um, but your like not even was, sexually, he just likes yeah. redheads. Your sister was definitely sitting downstairs in the chair, and I walked outside and was like, "Oh, hey, have a good night." It, I'm not quiet. You can ask Titmouse. Like even when I'm trying to be quiet, I'm not quiet. I can try, but I I make noise. It yeah. what. See. Even on the videos I have where you're trying to be quiet, you make some nice noises. See, I'm under Thank the uh, belief uh, system of we're going to be loud. And you know what? If you're my roommate, you're allowed to be loud. I don't care unless I'm working. That's it. Go, you know, I, I if I hear you, I'm going to plod you on. Let's, let's go. <laughs> You'll Get be it. like, yeah! Get it. That happened no dice, once. no! <laughs> <laughs> that happened once at an, when I lived uh, somewhere else and it just eventually turned into each couple was fucking in their own room but it started off with one person starting and then us cheering him on in different rooms or them I should say them on different rooms my, that was fun. my first time no I'm sorry it was my second date with my um, soon to be ex-husband we were camping um, and I was not particularly loud back then, but I was loud enough that the couple next to us, they were, I think, Korean. It was a man and woman when they walked past, would not make eye contact with me. And I was like, whoa, sorry. I traveled, huh? My Let's bad. Get out. Get over it. It's just nice. <laughs> Come on. Every human has the capability of doing it unless they have a physical defect. Okay, people? It's okay a long yeah. time to learn to embrace the the not so pretty noises like the i'm sorry it was not my intention for that noise to come out of me sound um yeah those are hard to yeah i'm sorry they're gonna happen they're gonna happen yeah. it's i mean we've talked about it before like guess what yeah people fart people Cough, I didn't even burp. mean those people, kind of people noise. Queef people, you know, do whatever. If you notice it, giggle for half a second and then just keep plowing. I mean, really, I this new thing, spoiler alert, the new thing lately um, that seems to be happening here, um, I've, and I've shared this on the podcast, and this is true for, again, for a lot of, of I'm going to say women, because I identify as a woman, but, you know, um, however you identify, if you have a clitoris, um, I, I just need a different kind of stimulation. Um, 
vibrator suction, something like that. Um, and um, I'm chubby. My belly gets in the way sometimes. Dress Blex is not Same. thick, thin. His belly gets in the way sometimes. So sometimes we just kind of cram a vibrator in there. Um, but the problem becomes once I come and everything's sensitive, his belly is still pushing it on there. And all I can really do is that at that point is kind of like whine and squeal, which does not feel particularly attractive to me. But like, that's the only noise I can make at that point. And it's, I'm learning to come to terms with that. And that's finally like, Yesterday, I looked at him. I'm like, Do you just like when I do? That? He's like, Yes, yes, I do. And I was like, Okay, as long as we're all on the same page, because I hear it in my own head. And I'm like, This is awful. This is so horrible. Like, yeah, so far it looks like the general vote is yes, that that we like yeah. it when you do that. That's for the our, for our yeah. listeners. Yes, we like it when you squeal. Yes. I've never I've never made anybody squeal, I don't think. But Maybe hey, you gotta, it's good to have goals. So. It's true. Go. And uh, oh go yes. ahead. No, I was gonna wrap things up. Twelve, what you got for me? Well, speaking of goals, the, the goal to to do the pole dance thing is still still on the goal list. Uh had an interesting conversation come up. Who would you rather, Mountie or Firefighter? Mountie. Firefighter's one... overdone. And that's I... generally the vote I keep getting is, is Mountie for that reason. Firefighter's overdone. And cliche. And you're Canadian. Like, why wouldn't you be a Mountie? That that was my logic. We're we're planning. Oh, well, I'm planning to do a photo shoot. Ghostbuster, Mountie. I'm looking for a third. So if you guys or our listeners want to make a suggestion, I'll take option number three. If She Hulk new trailer drops, she is amazing looking in her dresses. <laughs> she does look very good. The show itself does not, in my opinion. I'm willing to, of course, give it the old college try and watch the episode that or two. Nerdy again. Wrap it's not this nerdy, shit it's up. Sexy. <laughs> Is it really? I haven't seen She Hulk. Yeah, watch the trailer. Just the look whole, it up on YouTube. You'll see. The whole basis of that character, when she was uh, conceived, I suppose, was meant that she brings out the like the over sexualized side of that character. So she's meant to be. A, you know, a seven foot bombshell or however tall she is. Yeah, there's there's Horny a scene tail. where she's literally swiping right on everyone on Tinder and then she finally meets somebody and Amazon carries the dude to the bedroom, basically. It's like, all right, then snoo snoo yeah. it is. Fuck yeah, we need a little bit of sex in, in our um, Marvel. Just a little. We don't have very well, much. I mean, there was uh, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and some other stuff, so. Yes, but that was not considered a canon until recently, and we had only a sex scene in Internals. That's it. Fair enough. But with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up before Moo decides to keep yelling at me. Thank you all so much for listening and watching. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Uh, and if you haven't enjoyed yourselves, please do so now. Enjoy yourselves. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw this out as long as possible. Um, uh, until... I mean, I've got another subject if you want to drag it on. Nah, we better not. Until next time, everyone, uh, please try and remember to be excellent to each other. Enjoy yourselves and love yourselves. Be good to yourselves. Give yourselves grace. Um, don't be afraid to make a little noise. Don't be afraid. This is going to sound grosser than I mean, but don't be afraid to figure out what comes out of you when you let yourself go. Your purpose in life is to find the things that make you happy and keep on choosing them. You've said that before. Have That's I? Okay. Yes. Still relevant. I like that one. Well, there you go. Um, she hulks news too, please. Yeah, please. <laughs> Mommy.
Mommy. Excuse me. Sorry. Mommy. <laughs> no, 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 excuse so, me. Sorry. Yeah. Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> Mommy. Until next time, dear viewers and dear listeners, we will go ahead and talk at you later. Bye for now. Bye.